Hi YouTube, welcome back to another knife review. Today we are taking a look at the Kaiser Theta. And before we get into the knife, I'll show the packaging, just in case you wanna know. So here is the package. A little different than they have been in the past. A little uh, nicer looking. A couple little pictures on there. That box opens up. And in here you have all your little flyers different Kaiser knives, and a microfiber cleaning cloth. So that's always nice to get. And a new pouch, which is a lot nicer than the old zipper pouches. It looks a little better and a little smaller, a little more sleek. So really cool that they include that with it. And now that we got that out of the way, we can get into the knife. So uh, actually before that, um, I'm at about a thousand subscribers right now, so thank you if you're subscribed. That's really cool that I got that far. Um, if you're not subscribed, uh, help me out. Help me get a little more subscribers, but uh, thanks to everybody that subscribed so far. And now I'll get into the knife. So here is a couple looks at it. And I kind of have a checklist with this knife. I'm going to try to do that with all of my knives now so that I can show, um, you can kind of compare the reviews a little easier. So first we'll go over the specs and features of the knife. And I might as well go over the measurements right now. It is a overall length of 7.375 inches, a blade length of 3.125, a handle length of 4.36 inches, and a blade thickness of 0.14, and a handle thickness of 0.5. Blade shape is a Warren Cliff blade with a plain edge, stone washed finish, and a flat grind. Blade steel, as you can see on this side, I think. Oh, nope. Over there, S35VM, like most Kaiser knives. So, uh, probably used to that. And titanium handles. You're also probably used to that if you're into Kaisers. A weight of 3.91 ounces, so pretty light, but it is a very small knife. Clip is right hand tip up carry only, not reversible, and it is on ball bearings, like most Kaisers. Features a lock bar, stabilizer, and over travel stop, or whatever you call them. Steel insert, kind of see it in there, but it engages on the titanium in there, so you can't extend it past there. Every titanium folder or flipper, or any titanium knife should have that feature, but thought I'd mention that. And as you can see, it is a frame lock. <clears throat> so now I can go over more of the appearance of the knife, kind of the design language. Um, first off, the flipper. You can see um, a normal knife would have a flipper sticking straight out usually. Some of them pretty far, some of them are kind of minimal. This one is slanted up, very small. Doesn't uh, get in the way of anything in your pocket or pocket, pocket pecker as other YouTubers like Nick Shabazz would call it. but. I've never had a problem with a flipper tab in my pocket, but if you have, then this is the flipper for you because it's out of the way. It's a really minimalist design. You can see it's pretty simple, um, especially for um, Elijah Isham's other designs. The uh, Echelon and the Escaton, I think, are a couple of his kind of crazy, futuristic... Um, fantasy knife designs. So this is a very toned down, uh, minimalist knife. Plain blade, one standoff, uh, just a little bit of milling on the handle, and a plain pivot. That's another thing. The uh, pivot is using the new design of the pivot, not this old swirl design, which a lot of people got tired of pretty quickly. Um, I never really minded, but it does look really good on this knife to have a smooth pivot. And in the blade, you can see there's a hole. You can spidey flick it. You can technically see if I can do this. You can thumb flip it. 
Uh, it's not as easy. It's a little harder, a little more awkward to do, but spidey flicking, pointer finger flicking, whatever, all easy, two hand opening. Very nice, very functional, um, very cool look to it. I was kind of worried about some of these knives because I didn't know how strong that little section of steel would be, but I'm not going to be batoning any of my knives or using them hard enough to break that, so shouldn't matter for me. There's milling right here for the thumb relief to make it easier for you to unlock it, so pretty standard on most frame locks now. And as I said earlier, just one standoff. So right before I did this review, I kind of uh, cleaned out some of the dust just running a paper towel through there. And it was a lot quicker and a lot easier than most other knives, backspacer knives, or knives with multiple standoffs. So very easy to clean. Get all your pocket lint out. And just the design in general is really cool to me. It's got a um, kind of a wide blade with a skinny handle. Uh, not as ergonomic as a lot of his other designs, but it does feel good in the hand. I like it. I can pretty much get a full grip on it. If you have big or wide hands, you might not be able to, but I wear about a large size glove, so fine for me. Maybe not if your hands are bigger, but still a very cool looking design and pretty useful. No jimping or anything up here, but it doesn't really feel like you need it with this, uh, with this shape right down here for your finger to go into. It just kind of grips in tightly. Now I'll get into some of the goods that I wrote down about uh, kind of just what I like about the knife. So uh, it came really sharp out of the box. Uh, I don't really have anything to test it with here, but um, well here, some of my little cheat sheets. Very sharp out of the box. So uh, another thing that just, that's how a knife should come, but there are knives that come not very sharp. So nice to point that out. Oh my God, there we go. That doesn't usually happen, uh, miss flipping that many times. I do miss flip this knife, but every once in a while usually. Um, it flips really well after you clean it. So before you clean it, when you first get it, it'll have a, or at least mine did and a lot of other people's did, it'll have a gunkier kind of, um, kind of just watery, but you can tell it's got like machining gunk down in the bearings and everything. It's kind of grimy. No matter how hard you flip it, you're going to get that out of it. Now it is smooth. I mean, taking the lock bar tension off, you can see how smooth that is. And it is well centered and completely tightened down. So it is rock solid right now. So it's not loose or anything. That's just once you clean it, it gets super smooth. I really like the spidey flicking about it. it. Works really well. It's got a nice place right here for your finger to go into and flick it. Not really for thumb stud or thumb flipping, but spidey flicking is great. Feels pretty good in the hand. I like the way it feels in my hand and if you have about the same size hand as mine, you'll probably like it too. No hot spots or anything, nothing wrong with the clip. Everything on this knife, other than just the kind of gunk in the pivot, seems to be perfect. So there's no quality control issues. Other than that, I don't see any um, off-center blade grind or any weird things. Like one of my, uh, my other Kaisers has a double-drilled Torx bit, uh, or uh, the, the, the Torx hole or whatever in the pivot was double drilled, so uh, that's kind of messed up, but this has no problems on the quality control side. Machining wise, assembly wise. Uh, 
I believe this side of the pivot is captured, so it's got a little D cut out that goes into this side of the titanium. So you only have to use one uh, Torx bit, take that out. That's really nice compared to some of the other Kaisers. You need two to break it loose. Um, so I like what they did there. And the size is really nice. So a lot of other knives that I've been buying lately have been really big, really heavy. My Kaiser Megatherium is huge, and this is really small, and I'm kind of going towards small knives right now, so I like this design. It definitely added to my small knives collection. And now to some of the bad stuff, some of my gripes. So obviously that dirty pivot when you get it, make sure you're able to clean it when you get it if you're going to buy it because it doesn't really flip out of the box it just kind of does that so once you get it once you clean it then you'll be able to flip it perfectly every time and another little gripe is that thumb flip right there pretty hard to do you can't really do it up here just because you don't have leverage on it but you have a little more leverage out here you just kind of hold, got to hold it awkward, and I really don't like that, but since you can spidey flick it fine, doesn't bother me too much. Now I can flip it because I cleaned it. Doesn't bother me too much. And another bad thing that I never experienced until just now is this blade right here being close to the back of the knife. So I really tried multiple times trying to get my finger down in that, like just while carrying it, I'd kind of reach down in my pocket and feel right there, see if I could get my finger down in where the blade is right there. And I could never really get it, but flipping right there, I did just get it. You could see it barely got me, but I mean, no knife should ever be designed where you'll have the blade sticking out of the back like that. So uh, if you do get this knife, I'd recommend maybe trying to sharpen it a little right there, kind of right there on that tip, sharpen the blade down like a, so it'll be about a, like a millimeter shorter, then it won't get you. But uh, that's the first time that's happened to me. So hopefully that doesn't happen to you. If uh, if you do get this knife, I'd recommend doing that to it. And I might be doing that now after that just happened. So uh, it also kind of gets uh, hard to get used to. So this style of flipper, flipper tab coming out of the top of the knife like that, uh, just the, the way the detent works, you can't push button. Because even if you do get it to push button and flip around, usually your thumb will be right here and it'll stick right to your finger so that's not very good i'm getting blood all over my knife now okay we're back yeah so it doesn't work the best for push well you can't push button really but then also um kind of i i bet if i handed this even to another knife guy and i said hey flip this see if you can flip it it wouldn't go like that it'd probably be a bad kind of half flip so after you get used to it for a little while you can usually always get the flip and it's nice and easy then but it takes a little bit of getting used to kind of a weird design not a normal flipper so that makes sense but definitely not something great about the knife and like i said the back of that blade is definitely the biggest bad thing about it and a couple last things let's do some comparisons Lay it down on my cloth. We have the Paramilitary 2 right there. And the Megatherium, like I talked about. These are both Elijah Isham designs. So you can see the difference in kind of his uh, design style. This one's a little more dramatic, a little more angular, a lot bigger. So really departed from this design. Both great knives, though. I'd recommend both of them. And the Paramilitary 2 just kind of show closed length and open length because 
Paramilitary 2 is a knife most people have, I'd say. There we give you a thickness. And kind of my final thoughts on my recommendations of the knife. So, like I've said, uh, if you're willing to do a couple things to it when you get it, then it's a great knife. Clean the pivot out and maybe knock the uh, knock the edge down a little bit just so you don't cut yourself like I did. Um, and then after you learn to flip it and everything, it'll be a great little knife. Um, especially when I bought it, I believe it was 153 on Blade HQ. On Black Friday, it went down to 135, I think, or 139, which is crazy low for the original MSRP, which is around $200, I think. Now it's back up to 180. So I don't know if both of those deals were just kind of holiday deals or if they were um, more of a they were having trouble with the pivot so they lowered the price now they have it fixed they raised it I don't know possibly if you get one now it could have a fixed pivot with uh, better flipping action maybe some changes to it but I don't really know, that's just the current price for it, but I think it's worth it for all those prices, uh, just as long as you're willing to fix it a little bit, kind of change a little things to it. Um, I think it's a great knife, I think it's a great design, just it didn't really come great out of the box. I'll give you a couple more looks at it. Let me know if you like this new style with kind of a checklist. So. Next time I review a knife, it'll be that same checklist with the appearances, the goods, the bads, uh, my final thoughts. So let me know. Check out some of my other videos. And I think that's all. Thanks for watching.